Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used HTC and other Android devices are worth at gazelle.com. And by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step by step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. And by SmartThings. SmartThings lets you monitor, control, and automate your home from wherever you are using your smartphone. Right now, SmartThings is offering all about Android listeners 10% off any home security or solution kit and get free shipping in the U.S. when you go to smartthings.com slash twit and use the offer code twit at checkout. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android, episode 213, recorded on Tuesday, May 12th, 2015. We're your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Ron Richards. Welcome back, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Excellent. I got a little bit of a little case in the mores, but I'm hanging in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say maybe the Mondays. No, I the saw, mores. Did yeah. you see that Lumberg is back? No, really? Lumberg is back. Um, no, okay. Oh. Full disclosure, HipChat is a sponsor on this yeah. network. But this was completely unrelated. I just happened upon a HipChat ad. Oh, yeah. The and Lum there's Lumberg. Oh, yeah. I've seen the billboards in San Francisco. Yeah, with him. Yeah. You're going to have to. I'm it was, an, it was a minute long ad, yeah. and it was beautiful. Yeah. Well done. And I'm not just saying that because they're on the network. Honestly, no, anything say, off yeah. the space, it's it's all right in my book. So 15 uh, years later. Or however oh, is this it? Yeah. This is one of them. Okay, I saw a different one. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. There's a few different. Gary, Seriously, Gary why Cole. is there not like a series or a movie based on Lumberg? I would, <laughs> I'm, I'm there. I'll tell you what, Gary Cole is a national treasure. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, honestly, between between no, he's good. playing the dad on the Brady Bunch and the Brady Bunch movies okay. to Office Space to his recent role on The Good Wife, the best show on television. Okay, Gary Cole is a treasure, a national treasure. I'll it's understand. Also. Part of what you're talking about when I actually watch The Good Wife. I'm telling you, get on Because now it. apparently I need to because everybody's talking about it. Get on it. Uh, we are super stoked to welcome back, as usual, when you're on Florence uh, Ion of PCMag.com and at oh, that PC World. Or, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, and this. <laughs> but it was. N never mind. I'm Doesn't sorry, matter where I you're from. You I'm just happy here. to have you here. <laughs> See, and this time I was like, I'm not going with Greenbot. Because last time I went with Greenbot, I can remember no, Greenbot. Like I get confused both. otherwise. I know, it's super, I'm sorry to confuse all you all. Lawrence, I apologize on behalf of All About Android for Jason's... Uh, Just apologize on behalf of me. I'm all over the internet. It's fine. All right, cool. I have no you, home. you are. You're busy. You've got a lot of stuff going on. We're going to talk oh, about some of the God, stuff yeah. that you've been... Yeah, today in particular, right? Didn't have such a yes. smooth sailing day from what I understand. All right. That's about I'm able to laugh about it, you know? <laughs> We're going to hear all about it. That's what we call a tease yeah. in the business. We're going to yeah. hear about it later on in the show, about yes. Florence's day on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just still trying to reprogram my brain yeah. as far as there where you, you work. Yeah. So my apologies <laughs> there. Uh, we got a lot to talk about this week. Obviously, Google I.O., we're getting super pumped for that, and session information was released on that. We can talk about that. Why Florence hates bloatware. A closer look at Android Auto, Android One's European expansion. So much, just so much on the table to talk about. But let's uh, let's simplify. Let's take a step back and go into news and talk about one thing followed by another. If there's one thing you won't have to wait to do on the weekend or find that TPS report, something like that. I don't know. Making an Office oh, Space you reference. Had it. It was you Android were there. It was the Android oh, the old timey voice in Office Space, and you almost I was had it. And trying, it, and then I lost and it. And like you fell on your face, like uh, like a, like <laughs> six feet from the finish no, line. No, you know, it, no. I, I know where I know what that is, Brian. You become aware of what you're doing, yeah. right? Becomes too less aware. of doing the thing and more. Oh, whoa! I'm doing the thing, and then yes. Yeah, right yeah. Well, it looks I like I'm coming in this weekend to work. Then <laughs> got to work on that old-timey voice TPS report. Uh, <laughs> it's your own fault, Brian. Really, yeah. it's our, your own fault. Yeah, you, you could have been a contender. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see here. Okay, Google I.O. I'm sure well, everybody's getting Classic Google about. maneuver. Yes. Right? Classic they, Google maneuver. We do the show last Tuesday, and we wake up on Wednesday to... Uh, the sessions being released, basically. <laughs> Google does this on purpose. Surprise! I'm, I, I'm not sure who was there first. Google announcing things on Wednesdays or all about Android being on Tuesdays. No. I'm pretty convinced that Google only started the Wednesday thing uh, once we started the Tuesday thing. I'm pretty sure once Andy Rubin saw the mouth thing, yeah. and then he's just like, do all the announcements on Wednesday. Let's, let's, let's. He's like, really? Yeah, yeah. That's what they're doing? <laughs> all right, we're announcing everything the day after the, every show. Yeah, and my listen, name is Andy Rooney. We're, we're going to announce things on Wednesdays now so that uh, Jason and, and Ron and everybody can uh, be off, off base and do their TPS reports. Andy, <laughs> just go away. You're not even with Google anymore. Just go away, okay? <laughs> You're doing your own thing now. Whatever. <laughs> uh, we love you, Andy. We do. Uh, okay, so two and a half hour keynote on Thursday morning. As predicted. Mm -hmm. Will it actually stay two and a half hours? What's that? Will it stay two and a half hours? Or will it run long? Oh, I don't know. Well, I mean, they have sessions that sure, follow it. But that didn't stop them previously from running long. That's true. Uh, that's very true. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see how much of that is padded with stuff that you're like, why was that in there at the very end suddenly well it's start. not like microsoft they're not going to be like and azure and all this <laughs> other stuff that you have no idea what i'm talking about yeah <laughs> maybe a little bit of that i feel like at every yeah. at yes. every io there's, there's always, at least one little part where you're like huh Is well yeah fun? you got to give the developers yeah. they really like you know well, yeah that's true. gonna give you an opportunity to go to the bathroom Oh yeah, you know it's the it's the it's the elves scene in Lord of the Rings movies, of the <laughs> keynotes. It's like, all right, I don't need to see this. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and come back and show me show me the TV stuff. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Everybody's been kind of picking apart the I/O schedule. Of course, Ron Amadio of Ars Technica, uh, many time guest on All About Android, uh, did a, did a really good job kind of breaking apart some of the things. First of all, an Android for Work update, briefly before it was removed. Show uh, A was there, and B showed in its description, Android M is bringing the power of Android to all kinds of workplaces, which then cue everybody going, oh, Android M at a yeah. Google I.O., which, I mean, didn't, you I just kind of assume that. Yeah. You, but yes, I mean, and everyone's, confirmation. Everyone's like, oh, we're barely into Lollipop and stuff like that, but they're going to say what they're planning for with the next one, and we know it's going to be a letter. I mean, this isn't a surprise. Do I, we, mean, I know, but I, I made that criticism, though. I was like, really, guys, Android M, like, can't we just wait a little bit because I feel like I'm still getting my bearings on L. Yeah. But then, still but, waiting for updates. True. No, it's but very the, true. But, no. The, but the purpose of Google I.O., and no offense, Florence, I'm sure Google loves you, but it's for the developers so yes, for them to be aware of what's coming down the pipe and what they're thinking so that they can think about it as they're doing the development. So of all places, it kind of makes sense. It's just that we latch on it, um, but it's inevitable. So, yeah. Do we, uh, quick poll, do we think that uh, Google's going to do what they did last year at I.O. and announce and soon after release a developer preview of the next version? Yes. Yeah? I would say no. Yeah. Oh, I, wow. I would actually side with Florence's argument and say it's it's we just got Lollipop. <laughs> I think it's too early for a developer version. Maybe maybe say one's coming later this year or whatever, but in terms of the product life cycle, you know, I think they still need to let Lollipop Lollipop breathe a little. Uh, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. That's a really good point. And they're having a bunch of sessions, which I'm sure you're gonna get to you and I'm just spoiling it. No, uh, about what material design. What are they? Yes, they are. In fact, uh, yeah. Matisse Duarte is is doing one. I, already put that on my schedule well, material design a year later or whatever it is. I, yeah. saw, I saw that year one, one of yeah, material yeah, design yeah. you know i will be there yep. y'all wanna turn up i won't be there. i will so we'll have a party and ron will tell you, you know all what about you're wearing? It. <laughs> you know you're i have my I, i'm starting to pick out my outfits right now for google io it's pretty wow, you are psyched wow I am so psyched. It's like Disneyland. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Is it I now? How many? Point. Is this fir first year? How many years have you gone? Third, to this is my third year. Third year. Yeah. Well, so that's great. So during the breaks, you can come out to Mission and Fourth Street, where I'll be sitting outside, and just tell me what's been going on. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll bring you some stuff. I'll be out the window. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, I think it's I saw like, somebody. It's I know. Like, it's like oh. the end of the Graduate. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Let's see here. What else? Voice access, hands-free access yeah. to your apps. Uh, you know, and that could be accessibility, could be driving, could be a number of different things there. But developers getting access to hands-free kind yeah. of voice input. 
And we're seeing that, that we're already seeing that coming in with the voice input with Google right, Now with Google and all that now, sort of yeah. stuff. So it's getting more voicey. So. Mm -hmm. Multi-screen Chromecast. There's a bunch mm -hmm. of sessions that focus on developing games with Chromecast in mind. Uh, a recent Googler quote to uh, Giga Ohm, rest in peace, uh, hinted at the next version of Chromecast having better hardware that would allow for improved interaction through multi multiple screens, through larger to smaller screens. So Take uh, that, Apple TV. Yeah. yeah. Well, But that said, also, I saw a bunch of Android TV sessions on there as well, too, in addition to the Chromecast stuff. Mm -hmm. So it looks like, you know, once again... Mm -hmm. You know, is Android TV going to get any traction? They're going to be, you know, and the, the indicator is how much, how many sessions at Google I.O. are there going to be? Remember the one year where there was nothing? Mm -hmm. And we're just like, okay, well, clearly this isn't a priority. And be between the Chromecast sessions and the, I, saw, I counted at least three, I think, Android TV sessions um, or TV related with TV in right. the title. Right, right. Um, so you've got to, assume, you know, assume that it's going to be a part of the keynote in some mm -hmm. way. So. Uh, advanced technologies and products. It's the ATAP division. So a bunch of, you know, cool things like Project Tango and a bunch of other stuff. They're presenting wearables uh, at a session, which I'm definitely going to, excuse me, that they hope will blow your socks off, in air quotes. Your, your, your smart socks. Your, <laughs> They'll your blow smart your smart socks, socks off. off. <laughs> and your sports jackets. Um, that was more of an you. implosion, Brian. <laughs> It's okay. It's it okay. I'll give, I'll give you half It was a point. quiet implosion. Yeah, it was. It was a subtle. <laughs> it sneaks up on you. We can fix this. Yep. <laughs> uh, and they said, they actually said in the description, we mean this more literally than you might think. So smart socks, totally I, a thing. Not, I'm not surprised. My coworker is actually doing a thing with smart socks right now. She's taking them running for Macworld. So they totally I mean, exist. If, yeah. yeah. Yes, smart socks totally exist. Uh, I got I got sent a link this morning to a pair of smart socks. Yeah. Some, yeah. Well, I forget what the URL was for it, but uh, yeah. Smart so socks. I, I wearable Android wear socks. They're coming. Those are some smelly socks. Yep. Well, that's some smelly technology right there. Yeah, how uh, are you going to wash them? Sorry. Yeah. Like I mean, what do you, you don't have to get into that, but. Yeah, it's true. Well, I, don't understand. I mean, they, they could use polymers and and carbon fibers and other things to make them washable right i mean this is it's 2015 can't we do this it's the future you're right yeah. it is the future you're right. uh, but, no, i still can't wash a uh, you know chiffon blouse in the you know washer because that uh, makes sense tell me tell me about it neither can i, yeah. I mean, we, we all feel you there uh sessions on app testing which uh you know i mean Big, you know, big surprise yep. developer focus here. Uh, but we've heard, you know, I think we talked about it last week, A-B testing is, uh, is hint, you know, kind of leaking out a little bit that there might be A-B testing for developers that want to do that. Uh, so, you know, more tools for developers as far as testing their apps. Kind of seemed like a no-brainer. VR gaming appears in a couple of places. That's kind of cool. And then, like you said, Florence, material design. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the, the Matias Duarte uh, and what he's going to wear. Oh, always. My God, he's such an amazing dresser. I love seeing what he's going to wear. It's just so... <laughs> it's, it's the red carpet of Google I.O. You're going to be there <laughs> critiquing everyone's outfits. <laughs> I get totally starstruck at this thing. As a journalist who covers this stuff, I'm just like, oh, there's Sundar. There's some time. <laughs> <laughs> What's the I, status of Sundar's facial hair? That'll be, that'll be I, open for debate. And, oh, Florence, okay. I know exactly what you mean because last year, this is like this is like low point in my career. Last year... Oh, no, I know the story. We were, we were at a, a, a press event thing, back, you know, backroom press event thing, and there's Matias Duarte. And, oh, were uh, you at the cocktail hour after the first day? I, yeah, it was something like that. Because he was walking around chatting with everybody. And, and I, like, I stopped to cool. chat with him. And, you know, with full journalistic integrity, I think I, I, I didn't even have a question. I think I was just like, man, I'm a really big fan. <laughs> I was like, oh. yeah. and he was I like, oh, yeah, too. great. He's I like, know. why are you here? Remember that time when <laughs> yeah. you talked about interface design? That was awesome. <laughs> <Okay. sighs> what you did with material design is like so cool. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Anyways, I got nothing for you. God, we're nerds. It was like, it was like I had the, the best opportunity to, like, if you had one shot yep. to ask Matias Duarte one thing, what would you ask him? And I think I just basically told him he's cool. You blew it I out. want to know where he gets his clothes so I can have my yeah. fiance dress like him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
paisley <laughs> is basically all you need to look for. You need to look for a different color paisley. Yeah, oh, and man. neons. So look at styles from like 15, 20 years ago, and you'll find plenty of it. Um, not that that's what Matthias, uh, Matthias does, but that's fashion. Uh, and finally, Bloomberg sources hint that app ops might be returning to Android. That's per app permissions. I saw that. Yeah. Um, used to be there. It was there briefly and then yep. it disappeared and, uh, it's been gone for yes. a while and everybody always wants it back. Yes. will be interesting. If Even if does. it might break your app, Yeah. but you know, it's interesting. You bring this up because really? not to pimp my stories that I've written, but I'm going to. Uh, I had a, an interview. I did an interview with Adrian Ludwig like two weeks ago. Oh, that's and right. Actually, you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he actually talked about like putting the, you know, the security and like putting the control back into the user's hands. And this totally kind of aligns with that philosophy. So it definitely hmm. seems like a probability. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see how Google navigates the waters of if a <sighs> user chooses to make these changes. Like it, it kind of becomes somewhat obscure right like great yeah. you've got all the power to make these changes and and to refuse you know gps access yep. or access to the sd card or to the storage uh for a particular app but then you might forget that you did that and then wonder why it's not working that's, and right. then you blame the app for that and, and then, then you go and write that's a messy you go and they gotta do a walk through right angry something. review yeah yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna make recreating problems immensely <laughs> difficult for the developers because you go from having not only having to worry what operating system they're running, what phone they're on, right. but then what specific permissions have they enabled or disabled, and it, you know, it kind of you know fragments from there and become stratified. And, well, you guys, yeah. we could have a whole three hour show about that. Just by the way, just I have so many opinions on it. I'm not gonna go down that route though. <laughs> I'll write about it. <laughs> <laughs> Look for that at PCUniverse.com, right? That's where you work, right? P yes. Sorry. Um, PCWorld.com. PCWorld.com. I will get it one of these days. Well, speaking of where she writes, do we want <laughs> to... Thank you, Brian. Just any time I'm about to say, and you work at, just put that screen up, up, up there. And... Do we want to jump to her story? Or... <laughs> yes, let's, yeah, do, let's it. do that. Yeah. Let's do it. Florence, you, um, you don't like bloatware. I don't understand why. I am shocked. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, tell us a little bit about your article on bloatware. Yes. So it all started with my wonderful mother, God bless her heart, um, and all that she's done for us as children. Uh, she switched to a Galaxy S6, and she's just having a hell of a time uh, going over to the Android side from um, the iPhone 4S. And wow. actually, I had a really... Um, con I had a really... Uh, kind of argumentative text message with her this morning because she was just yelling at me like through text about like, I don't know how to set up voicemail. I'm like, I, I use Google Voice and she's like, well, what's Google Voice? Tell me how to set it up. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> hold on. I'm busy right now. I'll send you an FAQ later. And she's like, Android is so like blah, blah, blah. It's not like iOS. Anyway, so, but it all started with her not knowing how to get rid of like all the widgets and stuff that came as a part of the GS6 Edge uh, on Verizon. So they were all just like hanging out on the home screen. Oh, I see. And she's just like, how do I get rid of it? Like she didn't understand that you have to kind of press down and, and hold widgets and like drag them to the trash can at the top to get rid of them. Sure. And the more and more we talked, the more I realized like her frustrations had a lot to do with the stuff that Verizon had like packed on there. So on Sunday, on Mother's Day, I was... Uh, disabling apps for her. And she's like, well, this is dumb. Why do you have to do this? You know? And so that just angered me. And I, I was kind of on fire that morning, just thinking about it. Cause I'm like, man, this is really upsetting me because I am so embarrassed. I went through this whole thing to convince my mother to, you know, go over to Android and she's just having the worst time going over. And I just got to write somebody to the carriers. I'm so sick of this. Like, mm -hmm. I have a platform. I should just write about it. And so it was purely, I purely wrote it out of passion. Just like, this is ridiculous. Well, and you're absolutely well, not alone. Yeah, and, and I mean, <laughs> that's, that's what in the biz we call an op-ed. And, right. um, and, and, and and you're, you're, you're the voice of the voiceless. I mean, how many people out there have complained yeah. about the, the, the crap that they throw on there? You know, I mean, it's one of the reasons why I left Verizon, you know, for the, for the option to have a clean install phone with no bloatware. And then, but then yeah. Samsung comes along and they slam their stuff on there. That's why I've, I've stuck to the stock Nexus ones, um, to keep it off. But, uh, but I can't, I can't do that yeah. very much being on Verizon. So like I was using the Nexus six on Verizon and I wasn't, um, it wasn't the Verizon uh, optimized one. So I wasn't getting the full LTE speeds, which is frustrating. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm using, you know, a GS6 Edge until my next phone gets here.
What's your next phone? <sighs> I bought a gold Galaxy S6. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I, I don't know. I feel. I don't know. I just feel like I. Is it the like gold that you I, that you feel that no, way? Why about? do you feel? Uh, it's the gold because I bought a Samsung phone. Like that's so un Androidy of me. Like obviously. No, but you know the Sam. The oh. obviously you know like the S6 is a different yes. type of Samsung. It has phone. the best camera yeah. I've ever used on the phone, ever. Right. How can you? I know. Back. No, I know. It's very, Fair. very enticing. And it's running Android. It's not like it's anti-Android. I mean, like, you're, I mean, it just... I can do whatever it, I want to it. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah, good yeah, for I, you. Good and, for you. I mean, that's the thing. Obviously, obviously, with your mom, like, did you advise your mom on the the world of launchers at all? Because, I mean, install, you know... Oh she can't it. set up her voicemail. You're going to have no, her no, change no. the launcher? Well, no, no, no. But, <laughs> I mean, you install a launcher, and after yeah, two not, taps, no. yeah. it's a pretty clean yeah, experience. Yeah, I I was yeah. like, see, mom, do you want this launcher? Because it has this cool, like, Google Now thing where it gives you all this contextual information. Yeah. It's way better than Siri. And she's like, no, that's okay. I'll just, you know, my mom's Romanian, so she has an accent. Um, she's like, no, that's okay. I'll just figure it out. I mean, that, she's that using is... using her iPhone 4S, by the way. She still has not activated her GS6. Oh, she's geez. still on the fence. <laughs> no, she's still <laughs> using the iPhone 4S. She's, that, yeah. yeah. And now that's she what can't I mean. return the phone. It's right. Been like oh, really okay. All so right. She's got a very That's what I was thinking. So she, she has was a very holding expensive it, like, Samsung to... calculator. Okay. And she All has right. an old iPhone that she's using as her phone because she couldn't set up her voicemail. Oh. And you want to change the launcher. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying it's an but option. You know what? She's... Anyway, she's, she's going to be fine. I told yeah. her, I was like, after a couple hours, after cooling down, I was like, Mom, look, it's going to take some time. It's new. Android's changed a lot since we last used it, but... I promise you. So she was time. Android initially and then went to iOS. Yeah, she and then had back. A, the first Galaxy. Oh, yeah. It just changed a it's lot. Smart. Actually, smart. actually, TouchWiz hasn't changed that much since the first Galaxy, but Android like, has. Yeah. No, yeah. it has. Nothing, I'm nothing just kidding. Like, nothing like family IT departments. I know. <laughs> That's a tricky situation. I mean, my mom has the S5. Uh, she got the S5 before the S6 mm -hmm. was announced. I actually helped her buy it yep. um, because she was interested in it. So I was like, okay, fine. Great. It's going to work perfectly for you. Um, and, and they're just, they're so different, right? Like if, if your mom or my, you know, my mom's very used to the iOS side of things, like it, it's just a different frame of mind, yeah. right? Going from this phone that's laid out in this way that you're used to, and there aren't a lot of decisions to be made around that layout to a phone where you almost have unlimited Decisions to be made. Do you want to make those decisions? And if you do, then Android, you're you're gonna like it. You're gonna feel it. That's home. very interesting. If you don't it's, want to make yeah. those decisions, yep. maybe iOS is for you because then you don't have to. You know. I, I like that you put it that way, and I'm actually gonna put that in a text message to her when I get on Bart tonight. Be like, look, you have a lot of decisions with an decisions with Android. Yeah. Just explore right. it. You know, she's got ten hours on a plane tonight, so. <laughs> for ten hours, she's Learn gonna be staring at the thing going. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, interesting. Uh, very cool stuff, though. Uh, I think we all agree. Blower sucks. It's Blower all Bloody and stuff. Blower does suck. Uh, what, what else? A little bit of an investment update. Uh, mm -hmm. So last March, Cyanogen raised $80 million, mm -hmm. and it's been revealed that as part of that fundraising, Foxconn, the phone manufacturer, the most scrappy little upstart, most popularly known for their work with, uh, <laughs> with Apple, uh, they were a part of that uh, round of funding. Um, it's no surprise given Cyanogen's ambitions in China and emerging markets, and Foxconn is kind of the place to be for that manufacturing. Uh, so it looks like Foxconn's getting in the Cyanogen game. Now, this is just they've invested in Cyanogen. It's not necessarily, right. you know, th th there's big companies that have lots of money have investment arms that use their money for different things, and sometimes it's interpreted by them betting strategic partnerships and things like that. You never know what will come of it. It could just be an investment. So, um, but yeah, it kind of oh. makes sense. Yeah. Um, additionally, Cyanogen and Cyanogen just keeps their, they keep bobbing and weaving. I know. Cyanogen inked a deal with TrueCaller to bring intelligent caller ID to their to their Cyanogen's OS. Um, so TrueCaller, I believe we've had we've covered it on the show before mm -hmm. in the past. Uh, uh, neat to see Cyanogen looking for ways to differentiate the Cyanogen OS and uh, TrueCaller is a. I think that's a neat little partnership. So I think that's a great yeah. partnership. Yeah. Uh, good very for good for the platform, and I mean, indicative of what CyanGen is trying to do. You disrupt, know, bring, disrupt. Bring, yeah, bring intelligence into its OS that is yeah. completely separate from Google. And TrueCaller is yeah. actually a really great uh, approach. To that Facebook has their kind of version of this that Hello. they released. Hello, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but yeah, cool. 
Interesting stuff. So, um, hey, we got a video mail. Hugo sent this in. Let's uh, let's take a look. Hey, Triple A team. Greetings from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I've been a fan of uh, the show from the first episode, and I also got to meet uh, Jason uh, on a trip to uh, Petaluma in 2012. Hi, Hugo. Uh, I have a question that I can't seem to find an answer to, uh, not even on XDA. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, multiple devices. <laughs> Wow. And yes, Ron, I still have my HTC Nexus One still working and running uh, CM5. Um, uh, this being said, my problem is with my Galaxy S4 uh, GPE Google Play Edition. I don't turn on my devices or all my devices very often, but I like to switch once in a while. Um, about 10 days ago, I turned on my uh, S4 GPE and it's running at 4.4.4. And uh, the Lollipop OTA update failed uh, to be pushed to my phone. Uh, the question there, is there a way to force push uh, the update? Um, I'd really like to have an official OTA for once on one of my phones. I, I unlock, root, ROM, all of my device, but You're I addicted. never did it with the S4 because I wanted pure vanilla when I purchased it. So again, my question, is there a way to force an OTA update on a device? Thanks. Keep it up. I like Hugo. I like you. You know why I like Hugo? Why? Because he wants the same option, like with shirts, as is with his phones. He's he's got a draw full of phones. He's like, I'm going to use this one. <laughs> that's what it seems like. It's, he likes to switch it up every once in a yeah, while. I like that. He's a fan, and I like that Nexus Multiple One devices. still still working, running CM5. Awesome. So yeah. An answer. It wasn't, I mean, if it's not an XDA, that's when I get worried. Well, <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> there really is no such thing as forcing an OTA, and I feel like we we kind of went through this. Recently, right? In fact, maybe it was one of your devices where there was, was where it? you got a notification that there was an update, and then you weren't able to do it. And then when you tried to get it again, you couldn't get it to come up. It was a guest on this show. Maybe if it wasn't you, it was a guest. Yeah. Maybe it was Gina. I can't remember. But uh, ultimately, I don't, there really isn't a way to force it. Uh, going into system, uh, into your you know system update screen and and checking for it. That's about the power that you have, other than this, flashing but, that OTA file manually, but it, well, which I mean, is that, that's lame. What, that's, that's what I wanted to get to for a second, but that's it, that begs a good question. That is, you because you got to assume the OTA update for a device and a carrier is basically the carrier sending out or the or the manufacturer sending out this beacon saying right. to all phones that come onto the network when you register, download this update and then run it or whatever. Do they ever turn that beacon off? Uh, I, I wouldn't and it imagine sounds like that they, they do. But it sounds but, like they do. It sounds I mean, like, well, yeah, yeah it kind of well, does. Well, Google said it was only supporting phones for up to 18 months. Yeah. Last year at I.O., they made it pretty official, and the S4 is older than 18 months. Yeah. But, but so the— So I'm wondering if it's just— Yeah, the <laughs> Lollipop update for this S4 uh, yeah. Google Play edition mm -hmm. uh, came out towards the end of last year. Oh, so, yeah. So it was pretty recent. Um, I wouldn't imagine that if they did that, they would then remove it so quickly. Um, but you've got to be able to download the ROM. I mean, well, you, definitely. I mean, yeah, I, well, yeah. I think what I think what Hugo is saying is, he you wants, know, obviously he's yeah. not afraid of doing that. Right. He wants to do it the 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 over the air uh, approach. And is there any way to force that? And I, I, sadly, I think the answer is no. My only suggestion would be to keep it powered on and keep it running for a while. And if there's you know, at this point, if yeah. I, I don't know how it works behind the scenes, but if it's the kind of thing where every once in a while, you know, it sends out those updates uh, at a slower interval, if it recognizes your device, I could be talking like making this entirely up, and I probably am. But also, maybe that. I all, mean, also sounds he's plausible. Flash. Yeah. Also, he's in Canada, right? Uh, yes, he is Montreal. Could that I mean, uh, Canada. Maybe. I mean, I feel maybe. like that—that's always the X factor. Uh, that the that region. Things, yeah, the, that screws things up. Maybe there's the something, regional thing. Something going on there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. blame that flag. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So. Maybe that flag is to blame. Yeah. Um, but, you, I mean, actually, I saw your name in all the forums on the places that I checked. So you've obviously <laughs> done your homework. <laughs> yeah, I saw your story there, and, and, and no one seemed to have a good answer for you. I'm sorry. I don't have a great answer for you other than just bite the bullet and flash the OTA sorry, manually. Hugo. That's all sorry, you can do. But if for some reason you want to get rid of the phone, oh, yeah. you could always go to Gazelle. Yeah, you could do that. We want to thank Gazelle for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. At Gazelle, you can buy certified pre-owned Samsung Galaxy phones and accessories directly from Gazelle. If you've ever lost or broken your phone, a certified pre-owned device is a great way to buy a low-cost replacement device. Gazelle still offers great deals on trade-ins for your old device. Just visit gazelle.com to see what devices are available and, uh, and check their certified pre-owned condition. 
The benefits of, order, of uh, ordering a certified pre-owned fo uh, phone from Gazelle are that they're available in two conditions, either certified like new or certified good. Certified good devices show some gentle signs of wear, but offer consumers who want to save a little extra money a great device at a great price. All devices have put through a rigorous 30-point inspection, just like cars, uh, to ensure that they're fully functional. Certified free-owned devices are backed by a 30-day risk-free return policy. All right, so Gazelle is the place that you want to go to get a certified pre-owned phone or trade in your existing phone. When you want to get, you want to upgrade, you want to move to a new device, uh, you can trade in your phone for Gazelle. There are tons of great benefits for doing that. You get paid in cash. Payment is fast and within a few days of your item being received. It's totally risk-free. It's secure. Gazelle will wipe your data for free. They're totally trustworthy. They've paid ne uh, nearly $175 million to over 1 million customers. That's a lot of money to a lot of people, folks. <laughs> so it's easy, free shipping. Most items qualify to get a free box. There's a fast process, no listing hassles. Gazelle makes it super easy to trade in your phone or buy a certified pre-owned phone of your choice. So this is what you're going to do. Find out what your Android device is worth. Take a minute and go to gazelle.com to find out or purchase a certified pre-owned phone today. Thank you, Gazelle, for sponsoring All About Android. Awesome. Love Gazelle. Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, Hugo, you might want to yeah, look just, into just that. Get, yeah, well, you got yeah, enough. You'd be like, why yeah. didn't you OTA my phone? That's it. To Gazelle. There you go. Uh, all right. Let's uh, check out some other hardware. So was Android One announced at Google I.O. last year? Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it wasn't as good. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, nearly a year later after that announcement. A year ago, we were wondering if silver was a thing. Right, yeah, do you remember that? Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, we oh, got All those fun. rumors. Yeah. Oh, oh, I can't wait. Is next week rumor show? Is next week rumor show? <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like wait. we're kind of still there. Yeah, bit, but we're going to... I love the rumor show. I got <laughs> to think of some crazy ones. Anyway, back to Android <laughs> One. Uh, so a year later after the announcement, Android One now has expanded into Europe as it was launched in Turkey. Google partnered up with General Mobile, uh, packing a Snapdragon 410 with 2 gig of RAM, a 5-inch uh, HD display, 13-megapixel rear-facing camera, 5-megapixel front-facing camera, and LTE support. And that's the first Android One device to have that. So if you are in Turkey, you can get on board the Android One and take a pretty nice selfie with those cameras. So. It's not a bad spec device. Not bad it's, at uh, all. Yeah, that's actually, yeah. Not bad for, what decent. is it, 260 Yeah. Around uh, $260. So. What, what is the Turkey uh, currency? Turks? Turkey Caicos? currency. I don't know. I don't know yeah. Google, help me. Yeah. Uh, Turkish lira. Ah, the Turkish lira. Ah. So one Turkish lira equals 0.38 US dollars. Mm -hmm. So there you okay. go. Yep, there it is. You heard it here first. So if anybody's right. listening in Turkey, let us know if you can get this phone and what you think of it. <laughs> I hear yes. Turkey's lovely. My parents went there. My mom wants to go real badly. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be wonderful. So. Uh, I'm not sure if the you know the the faux leather back thing speaks to me totally, but that's okay. That's that's minor. Well, I yeah. Well, so. uh, let's see here. The Galaxy Tab S or uh, is it the S2? Yes, it's the S2. Might be getting all leaky because yes, yes, we don't have yes, much yes, real yes, hardware yes, news to talk yes, about. Yes, and I yes, I saw on Twitter <laughs> that that Florence is, is excited about this. Uh, the Galaxy Tab S2 leaked uh, by OnLeaks on Twitter. Samsung's new focus, obviously, is on higher-end devices. Uh, this has kind of the metal panel uh, framing that we've seen with the S6 uh, around the frame. Physical home button, hopefully a fingerprint sensor kind of built into that. Uh, and then a, a few other rumors. I mean, based on the picture, it's 4.3, so similar to the Nexus 9 in that regard. 64-bit uh, octa-core Exynos, 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs storage, micro SD, 8 megapixel rear-facing camera, uh, and running Android 5.0. These are all kind of rumory specs. Why are you so dang excited, Florence? Because I really like the 8-inch Tab S. I'm still using it. And oh, okay. thus far, it's, it's still our pick for the best Android tablet that you can buy. Honestly. All right. Well, that's a, that's a, that's, so the question is whether or not this will live up to that hype. Yeah. I'm just excited because the, I already thought it was so pretty, even it's all its uh, plastic -iness. So I'm excited to see what it looks like with metal. I think we're seeing the emergence of Florence as a real Samsung fan here. Hmm. No, this is what I'm hearing. no, 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 I'm, no, 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 no. I'm hearing uh, Samsung on the tablet, Samsung on the phone, no. Samsung on the mother's phone. They have not made a smartwatch that I like at all. I really am wearing oh. the Urbane. Well, not today, but I'm not wearing a smartwatch right now because I've been dealing with Android Auto. So I'm kind of been ignoring that. Uh, but yeah, I've been wearing the Urbane, the gold one. 
Uh-huh. And that mention of Android Auto is also what's known as a tease because <laughs> we're going to talk about next. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> well, speaking... I realized I was doing that after I said that. <laughs> I know. Good job. Well done. So tell us about Android Auto. What's been going on with that? Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> that was it. That was a head palm moment. <laughs> that summed it up I for, killed, for the audio listeners. I killed listeners. my coworker's car today because of Android Auto. Okay. So I'm just. Now, was uh, it Android Auto's fault? It, it probably wasn't. It was probably because we kept it on without keeping the engine on. Mm. But I felt bad about like the environment and stuff. So I was like, no, 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 it should be fine with just the battery on. But no, I just ended up killing her poor red SUV. And then we had to call AAA and that delayed us like two hours. And then Ron showed up because. Right, yeah, because you right. called AAA. Yeah, called AAA. I, I was We're in like, the city, so yeah. There, yeah, <laughs> just, <laughs> did it happen? No, in the, so, um, were you in the city or were you in the suburbs? Yeah, no, I'm actually still here at Second and Bryant. Okay, so it was straight here. up in the city, like in the worst possible place straight to break down. In Soma, yep. right next to the ballpark. Oh, where perfect. It's all Right next to the freeway, so it's all like uh, oh, and trafficy and, and stuff. And there's no construction going on there at all, so oh, you're no, fine. Never. Yeah, oh, yeah, not you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Good job. Oh God, you should have seen the AAA guy showing up. He was like driving so. F anyway. <laughs> okay, so I'm I've been working on the review of Android Auto, but I'm not um, <clears throat> I'm not actually doing it this week. And part of it is because uh, I was gonna write it this week. But I decided it would be unfair for me to do a review without actually driving a car with it that comes off the lot. So um, I'm getting a visit from an unnamed car manufacturer this week Ooh. to get to drive that around San Francisco for a little bit. Um, and But I am going to write my first impressions with Android Auto. Like uh, the article's almost done. It was supposed to finish today, but... And you wrote happen. this, 11 Things You Need to Know About Android I Auto. Did. This was, this was uh, on April 30th, so... Yes, and I wrote it. this after um, I got my Google with... Uh, my Google. My demo with Google, excuse me. Gotcha. Um, I went to Mountain View, and they drove me around in a Hyundai Sonata around Mountain View, Google HQ. Uh, it was adorable and tree-lined, as you imagine it in your mm -hmm. dreams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then we also got a demo from Pioneer. Uh, they actually were kind enough to install the unit in my coworker's Mitsubishi Outlander. And so I was driving that for the last five days up and down the Bay Area because I live so far up in the North Bay. So I did plenty of driving with it. Um, so you have driven yeah. with Android Auto, but you're getting yeah. another... You're getting, she's getting one with a, where it's pre-installed in the car. Yeah, oh, I see. One I see. where it's like off off the lot with yeah. it. Uh, I gotcha. just, what? because the thing is, I don't mean to interrupt you, sorry, yeah. but um, it's, it's kind of buggy mm -hmm. <laughs> and I really need to see what it's like in a car that comes off the lot. Well, yeah, you want, you want the experience of a customer who's buying right. a car with exactly. Android auto implemented in the car. What is it like? Yeah. That's fair. Exactly. Yeah. Are they uh, going to be happy that they got that upgrade or the, yeah. <laughs> got that feature got that in model. their car yeah, when they exactly. rolled it off the lot? And that's a very valid point. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, Android Auto has been very off and on for me hmm. um, the last week that I've been using it. It either works really damn well. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that Damn's here. okay. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, yay. It either works really darn well or um, it just doesn't work at all. And there have been some instances where I've been kind of like distracted while driving because it's just like not. Oh, good. yeah, that's a big no-no. Mm -hmm. So, so. so so along those lines, when it's not working at all, as you say, like what what is that scenario? What's what exactly is happening? So actually, that's the video I filmed today. That's going to go up this week. Okay, <laughs> so we don't want to so steal their thunder. It's, don't want to do that. It's all about it's it's <laughs> all about <laughs> it's all about um, the bugs I've experienced with the Android Auto. Just because I can't, you know, yeah. get full. There we go. <laughs> There we go. Brian's right. off the yeah. office, off the mark today. Uh, no, he's, he was he was on well, he, earlier, but yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Eh, I'll get but, there. But, but I will say this: it's you know when you get a really low end phone and it's just super slow. Yeah. And yep. it the latency is ridiculous, mm -hmm. and it's just like I'm gonna throw this at the wall. This is really frustrating. Okay. Except you can't throw your car at the wall. So. Except you're like, I'm going to pull over because I can't find a gas station and I really need gas. I'm in my coworker's car and I have no idea. See, the gas mileage is like on this thing and yeah, that's... Yeah, you see, and that, that's the dangerous thing with Android Auto is that it's got to work really well in order to not be so annoying that you never want to use it again. See, that's the problem. Yeah. 
Oh, I heard an echo of myself. Sorry. But see, that's the thing that why I also want to try it in a car where it comes installed because right. Pioneer puts a little microphone. It's like a, an external microphone up above it on the roof for you to speak into when you're shouting voice commands. And they said that they have software and everything that kind of like, uh, you know, takes out the sound of the road and everything, depending on whatever car you're in. But in a car like a Hyundai Sonata, I want to see like, how do they do it? Is their yeah. microphone better? Maybe it can hear me. Um, I, I don't know what it's like to drive the car. Maybe the noise isn't as loud, so we can hear me better. Right. So Maybe. I'm trying to test it in different variables before I like write about it, essentially. Wow. Yeah. So <clears throat> maybe related, maybe unrelated, but I, but I'm wondering if you, if you notice this at all, when I, so when I record B-roll for like Android app arena, I'm taking out of my Nexus five, which I wouldn't say is an, uh, you know, underpowered device. It's all, it's a year old. So it's, yeah, I suppose a little bit outdated, but still I'm taking it out of the, out of the bottom through slim port and feeding it into, you know, whatever, whatever our video system is. Just the act of doing that slows down the interface and kind of creates a little bit of extra lag and everything. Is that something that you experience in Android? Because yes, you're basically doing... doing the same thing, right? Yeah, with a Galaxy S6. Right. And that's that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> so... Like, is it is it the fact that this is a year old phone or is it just the fact that it's going to slow things down when it's channeling out that it's... video like that? I mean, it's hard to tell because... I am doing it with TouchWiz, and we all have our little anecdotes about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, but not to take credit away from Samsung. It's just there are some definite bugs that need to be worked out. Right. That it's early. Hopefully, we'll get taken care of. And and by the way, I'm not the only one who's been testing stuff. Uh, my coworkers have been driving the car too just so we can get like different opinions about it. Yeah. They've been using different phones. I have one coworker with the HTC One uh, M9. I have another coworker with just the regular GS6. And then I've been also using a Nexus 6 like interchangeably with it. So it's, by the way, the best experience is with the Nexus 6. So with the stock Nexus, you have, you know, mm -hmm. a very fluid, like nice experience. And that's not surprising considering that's the, the phone that Google is probably testing it's not, with. And, you know. But not everybody has that phone. like. Yeah. Let's go back to my mom here. My mom bought a Samsung phone. If she got Android Auto, that's the phone she would use. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's that's well, exactly it. That's my big worry, right? Yeah. Is like the Nexus Five is not underpowered, but it is a year old. If the S Six is encountering that kind of that kind of uh, issue, then just think about the the wide variety of Android devices that are going to be plugged into a system like that. Yeah, and uh, that doesn't bode. Well, yeah, because the S6 goes into car mode and Android Auto mode, so it's like running at the same time. Yes, at the same time, no way. because the Pioneer NEX oh. receiver, it's um, it can be used interchangeably as auxiliary or Android Auto, mm -hmm. right? So it's mm -hmm. registering as both. So both of those apps are engaging. So it's just like ah, so many bugs. Oh my gosh, like this is not user friendly. See, that just makes yeah. me want to be able to run Android Auto on my device uh, in standalone mode even more because, you know, yeah. I mean, continuing with this kind of example, yeah. I can play a game and feed it through here and it's going to get kind of slow and choppy. I can unplug that video feed and it plays smoothly and really it's fun. nice yeah. and enjoyable. I'm sure it would be the same with this. And that's one thing that I really hope for from IO is, is some sort of way that you can do operate that Android Auto experience in standalone mode, just oh, on they're your working device. hard on this. Yeah, they're working hard, and they're going to put a yeah. lot of restrictions on what apps go into the Google Play Store, which I think is smart because I don't want right. people to put Tetris. I'm sorry, <laughs> on their dashboards. You guys, Tetris with voice commands. What what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> left, right, yeah. left, rotate, 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 rotate left, rotate, left, right, drop. Right, right. Ah. Yeah, it's just boom. thinking about like the people I see on their phones all the time when yeah. I'm driving. It's like in the fast lane. <laughs> mm -hmm. At least do it in the slow lane. Yeah. No, at least just don't do it at all. Or yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, interesting stuff. So um, so when are you thinking your kind of review is going to post? Sometime in the next week, week or two? Uh, yeah, so this week I'm hoping to have the write-up on my first impressions, and then we're hoping to have the review the week of I.O. Right on. So for your first, <laughs> so for your first impressions article, did you interview the AAA guy, or how did he work into the interview? Into the no, interview? no, not at all. No, because I, I don't think it had anything to do. <laughs> Our battery was just. How many I, calls are you getting thanks to Android <laughs> Auto AAA guy? 
Be honest. <laughs> All right. About half my calls come from. He was kind of scary. He would like yeah. was backing up and almost ran me over. I'm like, dude, oh. I'm walking here. Come on. <laughs> nice. Oh. Uh, that was not Ron, scared. by the way. <laughs> that, that was, was not, not me. No, I was off duty. Ron. I was off duty then. So. He did come within the 60 minute time frame, though. I will oh, give good. him that. Oh, good. There you go. Cool. A little bit of hardware? Go for it. Yeah, hardware. Where? Where? Little switch up is great. All right, well, just, just a little bit. Real quickly, we got a fun little video here to show you about uh, uh, a use on the uh, possibilities Android. are endless. Yeah. On the Android things Wear. you can do with Android Wear once we play the video. So a Macintosh two on Android Wear, ladies and gentlemen. So because uh, because we all know that you've wanted to run a mini VMAC two emulator on your Android Wear device. Look at and, the tiny cursor. Uh huh. There you go. It's a like Gear Live, right? That, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it looks like a Gear Live. Yeah. yeah. So this this is taking it back to 1987. You can insert a disc. <laughs> okay, booting booting Mac Macintosh System Six, but the emulator supports up to System 7.5.5. Oh, so, so totally modern. Oh, you can totally get up yeah. to 1996 here. But uh -huh. There you go. There you go. I've always wanted the old Finder on my on my. Uh, I mean, it's much faster than emulating Windows. <laughs> I Thank mean, you. just How look at the size anything? of that finger versus <laughs> everything on the screen. <laughs> Oh, it was very difficult to use. <laughs> the VMAG one, part of the System 6 has very small buttons, and because my fingers are big. I don't think it's just your fingers. Yeah, I, think I think everybody's every, fingers yeah. are big compared to yeah. that size of a screen. Uh -huh. uh, so if you ever wondered what you could do with Android Wear and if you could possibly run Mac OS on it, uh, apparently you can. Not sure that you want to, but it's a nice little proof yeah. of concept, I suppose. Okay, but can we please talk about how the technology of 1996 can run on these tiny watch. little things on our wrists? It's that is a fair crazy. observation. Yeah, that Come is... on, that's crazy. It's so crazy to me. Yeah. It's so cool. Gosh, Man, these humans crazy. are so interesting. Yeah. Back around this time, I had a Macintosh running that, and I was creating a fanzine with it. Wow, good job. So I could create a fanzine oh, wow. on my watch. I, I, was still, I was still on PC. I, I, I had Windows. I was running Windows Windows for work groups. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> and using PageMaker to do my zine. <laughs> PageMaker. Yeah. Uh, so, so what about you, Florence? What's your zine history? Uh, so in 1996, I switched from a Macintosh Performa 460 to a generic Windows machine that I asked my dad if we could upgrade to from uh, Computer Central. I think they still have those stores. Beige box? Bay area. Yeah, just like a beige yep. box. The beige box. Love the beige box. Mm -hmm. The ge the generic yeah. case that you get for like 70 bucks. Yeah, and I, but I, I, yeah. I used to use Clara's Works to make, um, I made little newspapers. <laughs> oh, Clara's yeah. Works. That's good stuff. <laughs> awesome. All right. Hey, um, are we getting hungry? I am hungry. To be honest with you, it is almost dinner time here in San Francisco in the Bay Area. Okay, so well, you can't eat what anything. What is for dinner? Sorry, you can't eat anything right oh. now, but I'm going to talk about food and make you well, even Florence hungrier. Is, she's eating. Oh, she's hey. She's rubbing it in. Yeah. Okay, Popcorn. fine. Yeah. Well, what you're eating is not nearly as good You're going to be jealous as sisters. this. That's true. Because we all love eating. It's hard to find a meal where you don't comp, where you you know, that doesn't compromise, basically. Uh, you want value. You want to be able to prepare it quickly. You want healthy, delicious food. This is Blue Apron. Blue Apron is awesome. Um, obviously, you know, Blue Apron is the sponsor of the network. My wife and I have signed up for a membership. Um, we get a few meals every couple of weeks, and we just love it. Uh, Blue Apron makes your cooking decisions for you, basically. They make delicious meals. It's easy. It's fun. It's delivered fresh. It's ready to cook right out of the box. As you can see here, I'm unboxing a Blue Apron delivery. So you basically get uh, all the ingredients that you need to make the recipes that they've picked out for you. And they never seem to repeat a recipe. It's always new food. Um, so, you know, you get these big recipe cards that, that detail everything that's in the box. Uh, here's the recipe card right here. This is crispy chicken thighs. Um, you know, everything that's inside so you can reproduce it later. On the back are actually uh, is the recipe itself. So you're given all of these uh, all of these ingredients, and it's all part. It's all uh, you know, measured out for you and everything. So literally, you just kind of go through the recipe, and do it piece by piece, and and put it all together. And if if you've never cooked before, this is a great way to learn because it really just kind of spells it all out for you. And if you have cooked before, this is just a, a great way to kind of save yourself a little bit of time when you're planning your meals for the week because they make all those hard decisions for you. Uh, we love it. We're, we're abs absolutely enjoying 
all the food and, and every meal that we're making uh, through Blue Apron is just super delicious and our kids love it and all that kind of stuff. They work around your schedule. If you have dietary preferences, uh, Blue Apron sources only the best seasonal ingredients uh, for your meals. You know, mushroom and Swiss burger, spring minestrone. Here we have the crispy uh, chicken thighs, which were delicious. This so was good. awesome. I think actually you have B-roll of me making this, the lamb and beef shawarma uh, with creamy radish salad. And uh, it's in there somewhere. So if you don't have it, it's all good. But I know, right? So I'm making you even hungrier. And your measly popcorn can't hold a <laughs> candle to lamb and beef, beef shawarma. You're going to cook incredible meals. You're going to be blown away by the quality and the freshness. And it's going to be delivered to you. They make it super easy. Blue Apron is awesome. Uh, and it's all for less than $10 a meal. They send you all this stuff for less than $10 a meal. So Blue Apron, it's a better way to cook. Check out this week's menu. You can get the first, your first two meals free, totally free. Just go to blueapron.com slash twit. That's right, two meals free just for going to blueapron.com slash twit. They'll deliver that to you, and uh, you'll see what it's all about. It's kind of magical. And it's awesome. It's, it's been a game changer for me. Has it? Oh, yeah, because I, I, I love to cook. Like I, yeah. I, I do enjoy cooking, but what drives me crazy is that to, in order to make one dish, I've got to buy way more ingredients than I actually oh, totally. need. You know, so the fact that they send you the exact amounts and it's all measured out and all that sort of stuff. They portion it prep out. Prep time is quick. Cook time, it's fun to do it. Love it. There's a burger this coming up this mm -hmm. way. I get my shipment tomorrow. I'm, I'm super excited. Nice. I get a shipment tomorrow as well. Yeah, um, so. yeah, none of the recipes, any of the recipes that we've received, now we've, we've made, I think, 10 or 12 uh, meals through Blue Apron now. Yeah. Uh, they don't really take more than... 30, 40 minutes to make no, uh, yeah. tops. So, And one of the things that's great is that you don't need to do it every week. Like, so the, no, week, the, right. the, week, of, the week of May 5th, they had, you know, as, as uh, I understand why, but all the recipes were Mexican-based, and I had eaten a lot of Mexican up to that point. And I said, yeah, I'm going to skip this week. And you just yeah, go to the website, you say, I'm going to skip it yeah. this week. They don't charge you. It works out great. Yeah, they work with your preferences, so yeah. it's pretty great like that. Uh, we thank Blue Apron uh, for their continued support of All About Andre and the Twit Network and for filling my belly <laughs> with this delicious food. All right, let's uh, take a look at some apps. <gasps> yeah, just a couple of apps, pretty pretty light on the app front here. Uh, first of all, Google I.O. 2015 app beta uh, goes material design. I was going to say, I, I bet mean, you it's got what? material. It goes full material. <laughs> what are they going to do? Ice cream sandwich design it? No. <laughs> hollow. That would uh, be trolling so hard though. Yeah. <laughs> that would totally. be, I, I, no, if they went all the way back to uh, gingerbread. Oh, man. <laughs> that would be great. That's going to be the retro. Yeah. In, at like year 10, they're going to start going retro. Vintage and, Android, y'all. Yeah. Vintage uh, artisanal Android. Mm -hmm. artisanal. Um, Bespoke. So there you go, Android Police. Of course, you know they they got the app. If you're in, if you're signed up already for the beta, you have access to this right now, and you had to have done that last year. Yeah. If you're not, you don't have access to this yet. You will soon. Uh, Android Police, of course, got access to that, and they tore it down. And it looks like there's a kind of they're partnering with Lyft uh, through the app. So that's kind of neat, I suppose. And then Beacons they say, are all around uh, so for surprised. navigating through the building and everything like that. And somebody they else... They are. You've, you've seen them. The little... They have the little uh, Arduino boards all around. Oh. Yeah. And so what... The okay. Moscone I Center. I, I think last year they had these things, and if you used your phone, you, there, was, there was some sort of interactive mm -hmm. thing, but I didn't do it. What was that? It was just NFC things. It was it was just tapping it for <laughs> NFC. Yeah, but, I was just tapping with NFC. And then and what From what happen? I remember. And then what would happen? Something comes up on your phone, maybe? <laughs> I think so. I didn't get. I didn't okay. see anything. I, well, then yeah. I didn't miss anything. I think I'm it's just, like checking in. I'm gonna, yeah. go, I'm gonna go out on a limb that you're gonna tap it and something happens on your phone. Whoa, weird. Yeah. <laughs> no, but they had no. They had some sort of like interactive contest oh, thing yeah. happening. Yes. Or, it was like a scavenger hunt. Okay, and that's what this was. I think so. Okay. I think so. But I didn't do it. Um, well, maybe this year you should maybe get on I the need ball. Maybe I need to get in a, you need on to the, do the scavenger, scavenger hunt. Yeah. They have an Ingress one too, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, interesting. That is that is an article idea. Mm. <laughs> there you go. Write that down. Happens. Write right. it down quick before you forget. <laughs> Write it down. You'll be like, what was that thing? Oh, the, all that energy doesn't post for another four hours. Oh, God, I can't remember. I fall asleep. Whatever. Um, also, uh, remember Interactive Events, the app that Google released probably prematurely because it didn't tie into anything, uh, but it's meant specifically for Google's events. Do you remember this? No. 
Here, I can show it here real quick. Yeah. It was this. This happened a couple of months ago, and it only works with Google Events. This is all you get right now. Uh, but I would imagine, because they did release this a couple of months ago, um, that you probably want to, if you're going to Google I.O., you probably want to have this installed because supposedly what it allows you to do is scan a QR code when you're at a Google event, and then um, you can do things like interact with the speaker of that event and other stuff like that. Um, but we haven't really heard officially whether this is going to tie into I.O. I'd, I'd be really surprised if it didn't. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but anyways, that's inter interactive events. And, uh, yeah, we haven't seen exactly what this is going yeah, to be used see, for. Yeah, it's very yeah. light. I like that there are reviews in the Google Play Store. I know. It's got 3.9. Like, nine. wait a minute, what, what yeah, is yeah. this? <laughs> okay. It, if it says Google in the name, yeah. it's going to have at least a couple of yeah. stars just based on that fact alone. Yeah. So, and anyway. the bots. Yep. Um, <laughs> so speaking of the Google Play Store, pre-registrations are now available for select developers and publishers, meaning a game or an app can be pushed, can be published to Google Play before it's actually available to purchase and da to or download and install. A user will get notified when that app is officially released and can decide whether to purchase it or not. And the first uh, entry point into this is the Terminator Genesis. Revolution game. Genesis. 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 Which is, is a tie into the upcoming movie uh, with uh, the awful spelling of Genesis. G Genesis. Gen Gen Genesis, I Genesis. think, is what they, they meant. Genesis. 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 Okay. I so, love this, by the way, that yeah? what the Play Store is doing. Because it's because now when people are like, when is Instagram coming to Android? You could be like, I already pre-ordered it. It's right yeah. here. It's coming. <laughs> Instagram can be like, we don't know, but we got a pre-order screen, so but, you can feel like you can do something about hey, it. Hey, Windows users, Windows phone users don't have pre-order screens. So. True, but you see, but that that's going to be really interesting to see how it gets utilized because there's something to do with the launch. You know, like when something just becomes available, and it's like you know, like kind of the 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 uh, the. Well, everyone's swarm, the swarm effect mm -hmm. of, you know, when an app comes out when you didn't know it was coming and the kind of surprise and all that sort of stuff. We've been mm -hmm. like, yeah, we're doing this and it'll be out in a couple of months, but here you can pre, you know, like I, I would see this to be utilized more for game developers or things like that where the games are oh, announced, so the applications are announced. But if I was just a solo developer and I was working on an app, I wouldn't do this for my first release. I, right. I you know, I would want, you, you yeah. want to come out of the gate yeah. and like, boom. Cause, cause but yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. on the risk of vaporware with this. Right. I mean, it's like, oh, it's coming. But if you're yeah. a known quantity like, yeah. and people are really tied in and following what you what you produce, like the Terminator, Genesis you announce people. a new game's yeah. coming up in a yeah. couple of months. Yeah, yeah. Do, act on it now versus remember to come back in a couple of months. When right. It releases. And, and and what's interesting also is that it's it's not act on it now to I don't believe I'm going to take a look at it again. But so they can. They can decide they can, to purchase right. it later on, so yes. it's, it's it's intent. So it's not even there. It's, it's almost like setting yourself it's like automatically download. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I think it's more like a reminder exactly. when it actually yeah. is available. Yeah. So I'll be interesting to see who uses it in what case. Mm -hmm. So that's all. That's the yeah. point I was making. It's good though. I think it's a, a good good capability. And you're right, Windows Phone. Well, actually, I don't know for a fact. I'm sorry. You're saying Windows Phone doesn't have it. That. I trust. I should not be picking on Windows. She's Windows making up for her sorry. Samsung fandom to pick on Windows. No. <laughs> Look, it's not a bad thing to be a fan of Samsung. I'm just looking There's forward. There's three things I'm a fan of. Yeah. BART, which is Bay Area Rapid Transit. Which, which you're like the only person in the Bay Area. I was going to say, there aren't know, any fans know, know, of BART. Uh, digitally imported, which I have already disclosed that I pay for uh, annually. Wait, what is that? Digitally imported is the best music streaming app for oh. anybody who likes... Trans music and oh. things like that. I don't know what the third thing is, but I'll come up with something later. Well, I, I look forward to your Samsung fanzine published on Clarisworks. <laughs> uh, I'll have to check out that uh, oh. digitally important. All right. Uh, let's see here. We got an email. Yes, we did. Laban wrote in. He actually gave me the proper pronunciation, so I'm saying that right, apparently. All right, Laban. Uh, says, hey guys, love the show. Been listening for about two years now. I've been, I'm looking to upgrade my phone very soon. I don't want to pay $200 plus for the latest and greatest. My question is, what, la what last year's flagship phone would you go with? I'm currently looking at the LG G3. <clears throat> I really like it, but since it has the older Snapdragon 801, I'm a little hesitant as I will have the phone for two years before upgrading again. I currently have the Samsung Galaxy S3, have encryption turned on for work, and it gets extremely slow when trying to do multiple things. I just want to make sure the G3 isn't going to suck this bad after a couple of years. Um, 
He says, I have seen some people install pure Google on the G3 and say it runs as good as the Nexus 6. I'm in IT, I'm in IT so rooting and roaming does not scare me. Might I recommend <laughs> <laughs> this? Not this. This. This is the Nexus 5. But the G3 has a better camera. Yeah. It does. Okay. Well, but I, I firmly believe the Nexus 5 is the way to go. Um, depending on, I mean, if camera's important to you, the G3 does have a better one, but I think the Nexus 5 under the hood overall total package is the best best phone of Although, what about the 1M8? That was a really, I liked it. That what? was their phone of the year last year. So, can, you still, can you still get it, though? 1M8. That's. That's a good point. I have not checked that. See, that's, there you go. That's, Jason. You can. That's, uh, <laughs> what, you think I researched these things? Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure you can find the M8 somewhere, like on Like eBay 23 hours ago, AndroidHeadlines.com says HTC One M8 unlocked with 32 gigs is $220 on eBay. So That's a little over his uh, his his budget. Or, yeah. okay, so here, here, here's what's timely about your request here. The Nexus 5... It's a Nexus, and it's actually a pretty darn popular Nexus. As far as the yep. Nexi family goes in, on, in phones, yep. it's probably the most popular Nexus device. Uh, it's still going to be supported by Google for at least another year, I would imagine, somewhere around that. Uh, maybe, is that overstating it? Mm, six months. You think six months? They, it launched... Um it launched a little more than a year ago. Oh, I God, I can't. I want and they're phone. saying 18 months. I don't want one. Yeah, I but they might, who knows? It's so popular. I want my Let's, Nexus 5 forever. Well, a lot of Googlers use it too, so yeah, I would no, imagine totally. they'd be like, no. Right. Um, so if you, so there's, we have an article in here, 9to5google.com. There is, they have the Nexus 5 plus a one-year unlimited talk, unlimited text, and 500 megs per month plan. Uh, this is no contract, so you just get a year of that coverage plus the Nexus 5 device. Uh, for 200 bucks. That's not bad. That's like a really good price for all that. You could even do that if you didn't want that plan. That plan yeah. is like, you don't need that plan. $200 for the really Nexus good. 5 is still yeah. a very, very good price. I would probably hop on it soon. I don't know how long this is going to last, but that is a really good deal. That's a really, really good deal. <laughs> and then also, and the chat room is yelling us about it, uh, one plus one. Oh, you can't yeah. ignore the OnePlus One. I mean, it's it's, it's true. It's, they've they've gotten rid of the invite only system. You now can buy one. Anyone can buy one. It's a low cost phone that is pretty uh, darn good. But so okay, um, but that's from two hundred ninety eight dollars. Exactly, it's a little more. Money. So you're paying a little bit more yeah. for that. Yeah. Um. So there's some yeah. options. So you're so yeah. HTC M HTC One M eight. You can find out there for mm -hmm. about two probably two fifty or so. Mm -hmm. Nexus Five you can get for two hundred. It seems here or the One Plus and One and a bonus like plan to boot. Yeah, which is, is not bad. That's so. that's great for like an emergency. You know, you know, an emergency plan or something. Yeah. I don't know. Um, you could take it or leave it. But there you go. Hope that helps. Um, that's a really good price for the for the Nexus Five though, and especially considering the fact that you can't really get the Five through the Google side anymore. Right. Uh, but it's still a great phone. Still I love my five. Because we'll have a new one at I.O. That's right. Yeah, I, you I think? hope, I hope so much because then I'll get Yes, it. because not everybody likes the big Nexus, Nexus yeah. 6. They're like, it's too big. What is that, a tablet? Yep. True. Bingo. It is pretty you hit big. the nail on the head. That's my. That's all I want for Christmas is a five-inch phone. <laughs> what about 5.3? 5.3. Okay. No more than 5.5. Yeah, because the rumors right now are, you know, a yet again, talking about rumors, that there yeah. will be two Nexus this year. Didn't yeah. we hear that last year? We, we heard did. that last year. We did. And that didn't end up happening. But maybe what we were hearing last year is actually this year. Well, I But it just didn't come to fruition. No, but I, I, I actually now. don't think, I, well, I know, I don't, we're doing room, but but yeah. the, okay. the <laughs> announcing new hardware. Save it. The, yeah. <laughs> the, the Nexus 6 just like came out, I mean, the announcing new hardware is a fall thing. Yeah. Not, you know, uh, unless the six is such a, a failure, failure yeah, yeah. that it makes sense to uh, lead up to the next one. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, hey, how about them hey, smart things? Yes, how about how about smart uh, devices like smart things? I'll give this That's to so cool. Ron here. Smart things uh, is another sponsor of today's episode of All About Android. Smart things have made it easier than ever to turn your your home into a smart home. Many of us, you know, have dabbled in. This and that when it comes to home automation, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Uh, but it used to be expensive to just get started. Most companies use uh, proprietary systems. Uh, they each have their own user experience. So it can be very frustrating. SmartThings changes that. SmartThings Hub, which is what you see right here, 
This actually controls all of the components of smart things that, that you can install throughout your home. It controls lights, locks, security, everything through a very simple uh, app on iOS, Android, Windows Phone. That's because it's an open platform. SmartThings works just as well with its own sensors as it does with connected devices from Dropcam, Schlag, Locks, uh, Honeywell thermostats, and the list goes on. SmartThings is so revolutionary, in fact, it won the CES 2015 Editor's Choice Award. Cool stuff. Um, you know, just one example of what you can do with smart things. Home security is just a single category that you could explore and kind of come up with your own ways. Your, you know, use your imagination to come up with ways that you can combine these components to do cool things just around securing your home. You can lock and unlock your doors from anywhere. You can even have your doors recognized when you're close and unlock themselves, uh, saving you from pulling out your keys. Uh, you can get instant alerts if there's unexpected movement or entry into your home. Uh, you can set a camera to take a bunch of photos when unwanted motion or entry is detected. You can trigger an alarm to sound if there's unwanted motion. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. You just use your imagination. And you can combine these things to do really cool things. Get notifications when people, pets, uh, you know, different cars come and go so you know who's home and who's not. Uh, with no required monthly fees, contracts, or installation costs, SmartThings makes home security affordable for everyone. Uh, and there's energy savings, you know, restricting electricity flow to electronics or appliances after a set period of time, detecting when there's possibly a water leak, you know, water detection so that you can uh, go there and save yourself thousands of dollars in repairs. Uh, the options are, are truly endless. Just use your imagination. You can come up with some really cool stuff with no required monthly fees. And kits starting at just $189, SmartThings is an affordable way to create your smart home. And just for our Twit audience, SmartThings is offering you a chance to save even more. You can get 10% off any home security or solution kit, and you'll get free shipping in the U.S. Just go to smartthings.com slash twit and use the offer code twit when you check out. That's smartthings.com slash twit. Make sure and use the offer code twit. Uh, to let them know that, you know, you heard about it on the Twit Network and to save yourself 10% uh, off and get that free shipping. And we thank SmartThings for their continued support of All About Android and the Twit Network. Uh, there you go. Thank you, uh, Vanna. I appreciate My that. Pleasure. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's get into the arena. So many <laughs> enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. Let's see here. Gina had Gina. to win it this week, didn't she? I she just under, had to win it. I underestimated <laughs> the the verisifus, if that's a word, for whatever. I'm not feeling well. Uh, support that the uh, All About Android community gave to Gina. She is truly beloved, and you could tell by her app, which, let's be honest, I don't know if it would have won if she was still a regular on the show. <laughs> or if it we, was a neat mm. app. It was a neat app. I will. Fifty-five percent. That's that's saying. Something. I will say that literally no more than twenty-four hours after we recorded the show, um, there was the question of how long uh, a couple of pieces of chicken would last in the fridge before I cooked them, and the thought did cross my mind. Oh, if only I had installed Gina's app, I could see that it would last one to two days. So maybe it is a. a, a useful I think app. it's. I think it is. Yeah, I yeah, think everybody think needs is, to know yeah. whether their food is any good anymore. And. Uh, <laughs> You know, I think it's very, very helpful. Uh, so let's see here. So, yes, Food Keeper, 55%, the winner. Second place would be App Chat Alpha. I'll, I'll go ahead and take that yeah. uh, at 31%. And third place, File Chat at 13%. What does that mean? That means Ron. I go first. Who's first? All right. So uh, we all love, we, all, we, want, we want to know as much information about our phones as possible. And I know we've looked at a couple of different apps that give you different ways to go, you know, under the hood and see what's going on inside your phone. The latest of which is a phone is an app I found called Castro, uh, which is free in the Google Play Store. And not only this is is I'm becoming a broken record with this. Not only is it a great app that does something really well, but it's got some pretty cool material design. I know. I feel like every app that I review on Android yeah. App Arena is that way. Actually, and it's we can cut, yeah, there with we a go. floating nice. action bar uh, button and blah yeah. blah blah. Well, so I'm just gonna tap on Castro here. And Even the icon was material design. The, yeah, no, look at that. Look, that's a great little icon. <laughs> They've got yeah. a floating action button on the yeah, icon. Yeah, I know, right? They didn't. They didn't. <laughs> and their screenshots that. have filters on them, or yeah. their picture has a filter on it. Yeah. In the Google Play Store. Anyway. So, 
Going into the app, though, um, it opens up on this screen. It just tells you basic information about your device. I've got a Nexus 5, uh, code name Hammerhead, mm -hmm. um, who the manufacturer is, what OS version, the build number, SDK version, radio module, um, all your, I probably don't want to show all this information, but um, serial number, IMEI, <laughs> device IDs, your resolution, your frame rate, all that information. Uh, nobody cloned my IMEI. Um, is, hit, is that possible? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, uh, Darren from Hack5 probably knows how. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so you hit the hamburger button, and that brings out this neat little menu, which not only has got... You see, this is, this is the thing about material design, is that it's very easy to utilize material design and just depend on the colors and do a, a while a material design thing but slightly boring mm -hmm. and i'm interested to see when apps actually take that and add in a bit of flair and add in a bit of design to it and in this case it's something as simple as just giving the little computer board thing up top there or it gives, mm -hmm. gives me a a feeling of identity yeah so, sure yeah so anyway mm -hmm. um so i can tap from device i can go to cpu and I get all the information about my CPU. I've got an ARM version 7, who the, who the vendor is, the ar architecture, how many cores, my CPU load. I can, I can see the individual usage for each of the four cores on my, C on, on my CPU. Um, it's got information about your GPU. Um, so if you're really into this stuff, this is going to give you all the information you want. Uh, here's the information on the kernel, right? Um, we can go in. As always, we all know we love a good ba a source of battery information, detailed battery, um, what the level is at, where the power source is, what the status is, the health of the battery, um, what type it is, um, the capacity, all that great stuff, all in here. Memory as well. Um, so, you know, a lot of times I get really frustrated with the uh, Android stock system settings and memory management. So this is a different way to take a look at it. Um, I can see how much total RAM I've got, how much is available. Um, I can look through to see how much internal me memory is available. It gives you just that high-end view. It doesn't give you a deeper dive than that, but that's sometimes that's enough. Um, gives you network information, so I've got information about who my carrier is, what phone type it is, um, you know, all that information, status of Wi-Fi, um, and finally, information on your camera. It tells you what the back camera uh, resolution is, quality, um, focal length, all that fun stuff, what's supported. So if you get handed a phone and you don't know what's going on with it, you don't know what it might be, um, you can take a look at it. Um, this is a great way to kind of uh, go through the specs of a phone. Um, the settings are real simple. You can just set your temperature scale and look at the open source <laughs> license, the open, uh, the open source software license. Oh man, I'm going to spend all yeah. day on that open source license. Yeah. But so, uh, yeah, so for you techies and for you folks who really, really want to get deep into what your phone does, uh, Castro is the way to give you that information that is just sitting there and just needs a way to be accessed. So free in the Google Play Store. Check it out. And might I say, that that video feed of your app looks fantastic. It really does. It, it, you really outdid yourself, Jason and Brian. <laughs> we made it work this week. Lots What's funny, work. too, is that I'm still demoing the app on an angle uh, as if I'm doing it for the camera. And I, I just Old habits die yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, the great thing about Castro, though, yeah, see, I'm still, I was still doing it at this uh, angle. See, you, yeah, you could have so. been all awkward yeah, this whole been, time. And yeah, I know. But, yeah. but uh, go back to the Google Play Store. Um, they are updating it nonstop. Um, they're doing uh, rapid updates with the app, keeping it on top. So they've added in localization, so lang um, localization support for Greek and German and Spanish and Swedish. Um, they added the camera category recently. Um, you know, they've uh, added operator code and check for hidden SSID in the network category. So they're really working to keep, you know, keep adding more features to it. So, uh, yeah. Cool. So Castro. Castro. That is free in the yes. Play Store. Okay, I will take the feed here. There you go, sir. Oh, Florence, you had to pick this one. <laughs> didn't I you? know. <laughs> also, my video is live on Instagram. I oh, cool. All, know. all oh. right, so should we show that first or last? Yeah. Well, yeah, just show it. It speaks for itself, really. <laughs> all right, so so yeah. So tell us a little bit about this first of all. Set it up. Okay, so. One of my really good friends started just doing this for fun. She started posting on Instagram because she got uh, LASIK and she was bored waiting to heal. So she started doing all these things on Dub Smash, which is the name of the app. And it's become a thing in our little friend trio. And that's kind of how I found out about it. Honestly, it's just, it's really big on Instagram right now. What? So what? Explain Dub Smash a little bit. Cause oh yeah, I'm supposed to explain it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> basically, so you look for like sound bites um, while you're okay. So you like log in and you look at like what's trending, blah blah blah. But you can look for sound bites from like memes or commercials or cartoons, and then you basically record yourself to the audio. So like you kind of you watch, listen to the audio a little bit, kind of 
get to sync with it and then you lip sync it. And then at the end, it like dub smashes it, you know, because you're you dubbed, you're dubbed totally by the yeah. sound okay. right. So let's see here. So I'm going to need you to go ahead and come in tomorrow. Okay. So <laughs> should I make this one? Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Should I make this one? Okay. So I go out. I, uh, create a dub. I create a yeah, dub. Okay. So is it doing it? Choose stuff uploaded by me. Okay. And then choose coming choose tomorrow. Choose that. I just stop that. Okay. Then action, we wait. Action buttons. Oh, yeah, there you go. oh, hey, see, this is this is where this little feed oh, really Jesus. comes nothing, in handy. I want no part of this. Okay, so I'm going to listen to it so that I understand. Yeah. Um, I'm well, going to need you to go ahead and come in tomorrow. Okay, so then the, that... It didn't record it. Yeah, you want to yeah, you want to click cancel and I then see go before. back. And you want to play it before you do that. I'm yeah, I need you to go ahead and come in. Okay. I'm gonna need you to go ahead and come in tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then, and then we'll really wait. Excited. <laughs> then we'll wait. I'm gonna need you to go ahead and come in tomorrow. I'm going to need okay. you to go ahead and come in Now you put stickers and stuff on it if you want. I'm so going to need you to face. go ahead and come oh, in Jesus. <laughs> What is happening to our society? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> this is what you get when you guys put a millennial on your show, all right? Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's okay. I, appreci I appreciate the opportunity to put <laughs> the poo guy The poo guy on He's there. He's rapidly becoming our new mascot. Okay. Um, okay, so then I hit arrow. And so now it dubs yeah. it. Now it... And then it says dubsmash.com at the bottom. Yeah. Is that just yeah. always there? And then you share it. So you save it to your gallery or you send it in Facebook or whatever. Okay. Well, I'm going to save to gallery because I. Or okay. Instagram. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind. I can never get enough. Popcorn. <laughs> ah! You're so aggressive. It's T Pain. You have to be aggressive. <laughs> I totally saw him play live, by the way, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Ron, are you are you not impressed? No. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm going to make so many more of these today. <laughs> I, I, somewhere, I have to queue them up. <laughs> somewhere along the lines, I got old. Oh, and really? I used to be. I used to be young. I used to be hip and with it, and and with the kids. And uh, now it's 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 gone. You, you used to be all into uh, the Pac Man and the hula hoops. Oh man, I listen to now, that. Practice, I, though, I, lip syncing's hard. It's I listen. Hard. Yeah, it really. Practice. I did all. The, oh, jeez. Um, okay. I have a friend who's really good at it. I wish I shared your video with her, but I don't think she'd appreciate that. Um, <laughs> She's really good at it, though. What? So. Oh yeah. man. I just. Uh, it, it, I'm kind of afraid of this app, to be honest. Like, I, I want to, be. I want to offer more to it, right. but I'm afraid of the uh, possibilities. Like, like, like Meerkat, when, 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 <laughs> well, do I Caramba? That, that can't be. Oh yeah, it's Bart Simpson. So these are just sounds. I Caramba. So, so yeah. basically, so basically, what the app is, is that people upload sounds that then you can yep. take yes. a video of you lip syncing to the sounds. Exactly. Exactly. And there doesn't necessarily uh, need to there, there doesn't necessarily need to be any dub step involved at all. No. Okay. Well, dub it comes from like dubbing, like when right. you would dub anime. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, Are you saying by Felicia? Uh, no, he's doing Friday. Oh, sorry. Friday, Friday. Oh, why? Why would you do this? <laughs> because I knew why? it would upset you. Oh. Um, <laughs> I am now dead. Sorry, I'm not doing that. By the way, Listen, I just want a nice steak. <laughs> and some Dean Martin, and just leave me alone. <laughs> I'm sure I could find some Dean Martin. No, I'm sure you could. Yeah, I would be very impressed if there was some Dean Martin. Yeah, so. I'm no. into nuggets, y'all. I'm into nuggets, y'all. I'm into nuggets, y'all. <laughs> okay. Oh, geez. Uh, Memorable ads, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Ron. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> oh. Ble Bleak in the chat room just left permanently. Oh, man. So we scared Bleak off. Um, all right, so that is Dub Smash. Good job, Florence. <laughs> I think I, that's a fun Are you going to publish your video, your, your Dub Smash I mean, to I, Google I, Plus? I, I think you should. I probably should. Well, it, but that's the thing. Okay, so I saved it locally. Yeah, and so then you saved I your gallery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't let me share. Okay, so it's just a gallery. So to oh. go to your gallery. Well, that's, you know, Google Plus. Yeah, hey. I wonder why it's not using the share API. And is there some sort of relationship with Facebook that is just showing Messenger I and WhatsApp? I was actually wondering about that. Oh, no, yeah. it's not. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
So it's saved. It's in your gal. Yeah, it's in a different like folder in your gallery. So it's not in the. Oh, so it would be photos. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, there we go. I can never find the photos app. By the way, I know that, I, that icon. iOS does, app first. That that <laughs> that icon does not represent photos. It was on iOS first. Shocking. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Shocking. Is this gonna be embarrassing? <sighs> I hope not. There it is. Oh, chilling. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, so, so share. I would share. This is exciting, isn't it, folks? So many oh, tabs. There you go. Now you can share on. There you go. Yeah, so. Oh, everyone needs uh, to see this. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Put in your. Everyone collection. needs to see this. My needs to see. This. I needs to see this. My needs. I needs to see this. this my needs. needs. Just post that. Yeah. Yeah. Comments like, go home, you're drunk. People will not understand until they actually watch. I needs to see this. My needs. Inside jokes. <laughs> All right, oh. good. I'm done. Uh, well, mine probably isn't much better. So that is Dub Smash, by the way. One word. It's free. You can get in on the action. Bleak, you're welcome to come back into the chat room and watch okay. the I rest of the show. I used a fake email for Dub Smash, by the way. Probably shouldn't admit that. but So I don't know what kind of spamming they do. Oh. Okay. Well, you <laughs> should. Oh, no. okay. That's important information. <laughs> scroll down <laughs> to the developer or scroll up to who's the developer? Mobile Motion GmbH. Goomba. That's weird. The, the Facebook thing German? is weird. The Facebook thing is weird. The, the only the, the the share the default is Messenger or WhatsApp. Yeah. Why? Why not just use the share API? All right, you it? have so many questions about the Millennials app. That's fine. True, you just don't get it. How is You're that a millennial not thing? <laughs> anyway. I'm the millennial that picked it. Just don't trust 60%. it. What? I don't know what that was. Uh, uh, sorry, I was looking at best of uh, dubstep or, or dub smash. Dub smash. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be careful with it. the time, it works every time. Oh. <laughs> I forgot to mute it, though. <laughs> I'm enjoying it over here. I can't wait to do this on BART. Okay, let's. <laughs> oh, back to BART. Fast forget, fast forget to do this on public transit. All right, my app is called Goat Z. Oh, jeez. What? Do you do that on purpose? What? It is. Do you do that on purpose? It's called Goat, goat. Simulator oh. Goat Z. Goat Z. Oh, goat, 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 goat Z. Z. Oh, no, look at it. It says Goat Z. What's wrong? <laughs> What's going on here? I don't understand what the big deal is. Uh, it's oh. called Goat Z. That's what the that's what the icon says on the home screen. Uh -huh. Two hundred and thirteen episodes. I want to show you the home screen. It says it says Goat Z. Okay. So I'm not telling you something that isn't true here. It looks scary. All right. <laughs> you had a different app going into the show earlier. This was a last ah. Hold on. Did it just unplug? No, it didn't. Okay. This was a last minute uh, kind of- uh, This is an audible, right? This was a pivot. Yeah, pivot. Yeah, we should clarify to the, to the audio listeners, if you're not watching the video, the app is spelled G-O-A-T-Z. And it's Goat Simulator, Goat That's Z. the other way. Z is in Zed. I'm not. I'm not Z sure that needed to be clarified. Well, I, for I the audio. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't think they. Oh, this is zombie. This is zombie. Okay. Oh, oh is it Ghost oh, Simulator with zombies? It is. is that what it is? It is. It's Goat Simulator with zombies. That's pretty much all it is. It's oh. Goat Simulator, goats versus zombies, basically. Uh, all the fun of Goat Simulator, all, all the stuff that you've come to love and cherish about Goat Simulator, uh, but. Already, it, we're in day two. Mixed with uh, an outbreak of, of zombies, basically. And, uh, you know, this, <laughs> I can't really say a whole lot about it because I haven't played it very much because uh, oh. it was totally a, a last minute audible. But the minute I saw it, I was like, okay, this this has to be on Mateo's there. Mateo's going to be so happy. I know. I, I'm pretty sure Mateo's probably screaming at the screen right now because yeah. he is, he can't, uh, next he time can't he's on, this, he, can't, yeah. he can't use this. But, you know, you can fall down and then you can get up and then things fall from the sky so you can jump over things and get to them and stuff. And then Loot we'll get crate. up. Uh huh. I get in there and I, I pick up uh, things that explode. The antiquer. Oh man, I just need to, I need to go near something and make it explode. There you uh, go. There's some zombies. Okay, so there's some zombies. And yeah, good job. Take that zombie. I'm a goat. Uh, and I still have it. And you can go into the mall so you can recreate your day of the dead or your uh, your dawn of the dead uh, experience and you know hunt zombies in the mall. Uh, this person deserves a bag of flour. Okay. I, I don't think he was a zombie, though. No, but he deserved a bag of flour. You could tell. Oh, it right. was in his eyes. If he wasn't a zombie now, he was going to be at some point. Um, you're a goat, doing what goats do. 
We've all uh, we've all you know heard about this wonderful world uh, now with zombies. Oh. And I think it's worth checking out. I think everybody. It's already so much better than The Walking Dead. Um, whoa, you don't like The Walking Dead? No, I do. Oh, but it is well. No, you're. We just you're, we, we we had to stop watching it because it got way too sad. This has just oh. got a hundred percent more goats, though. Whoa, his tongue is stuck to a zombie. I didn't mean to do that. Can I have my tongue back, please? Uh, yeah, you're right. Um, oh my god! Is so I'm dragging the zombie around by my tongue. Oh, well, I mean, this happens in the, in the world of zombies and goats. I mean, this is just, like, normal. That was day three. The days fly by in they this do. world. Yeah. This well, is why so much the action. Nexus player oh. needs to become a viable platform, because I want to play this on the TV yeah. with a control pad. I don't want to do this on the smartphone. I want my friends to watch this while we are Apple drinking store? tequila. Oh, oh I, think I, I think I just exploded something in an Apple store. You're right. You're dying. Um, so there you go. Uh, and you can, you know, upgrade your goat. And apparently I never run out of bags of flour to throw it at people. Except you just died. But you can die. It's that's, not that's, eating you, though. What a waste of goat meat. That's a, that's a big difference. Uh, there are a couple of different uh, uh, modes of play, basically. You can, ha you can start off, let's see here, main menu. Yes. You can start off as, like, uh, the supreme goat. Um, with all of the, you know, all of the... <laughs> Look at the loading that's animation during the nice. thriller dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I guess I guess Leo showed this off on one of his shows and he was eating brains. I'm sorry I couldn't show you what it's like to eat brains, but uh there you go. Uh you can find it out for yourself when you check out Goat Z. That's Goat Z. Don't just don't don't ask yourself any more questions other than that. Just type in G O A T Z and you'll find it. Uh there you go. That's all I got. So, okay, so it was iPad today. Thank you Sandman. Um, and I'm sorry, Mateo, that you can't feature this next time you're on. So that is Goat Simulator Goat Z. It is $4.99, but it's uh, well worth it for, uh, you know, I'm sure eventually it'll be on Android TV. I, I like the diversity of the app shown here today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of in the weeds, <clears throat> hardware, specs, you know, information. Mm -hmm. You got whatever Florence showed, and then you got zombie goats. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, oh, we cover the bases. Uh, in the arena. So you can vote for your favorite app this week by going to AAAPoll.com slash 213. AAAPoll.com slash 213. Is it Castro? Is it Dub Smash? Is it Goat Simulator? Goat Z? Uh, <laughs> I'm still oh. laughing about it. It's so funny. Wrong on so many levels. It really is. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, vote for yourself and mm. let your voice be heard because this is an important arena, folks. This Am I doing something wrong, Jason? I don't see the vote stuff. Oh. There's it, no voting. Is it broken for me, or is it just... No, I probably posted it not as a poll. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want anyone to win. Uh, we all win. Oh. You're all winners. Don't worry. I'll, I'll fix that when I'm not under the pressure of there we go. doing this real quick. There we go. <laughs> Even the um, sad trombone didn't work. All right. So everyone <laughs> that is watching, wait for like five minutes and then I'll update it with the actual poll. I'm not going to take the time to do it now, but it is triple a poll.com slash two one three. And if you're listening to this after the fact, it'll be working for you. So don't worry about it. You're like, what are you guys talking about? Uh, that's it for this week. I think I think we've I think I think, I think we've scra says, scraped the bottom of the barrel with this arena. All. 213 episodes is when we jump the goat. <clears throat> oh, man, no, no, no. <laughs> all right, uh, <laughs> Florence, it's always a pleasure having you on. So you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be a Google I/O in a couple of weeks. That I is will. awesome. I will. I will see you roaming the halls, and I'm sure I'll bump into you uh, in a couple of the uh, the sessions and all. Just that look for my Google Maps bag. I wear it every year. Oh, really? Yes, I bought one three years ago at my first I.O. So, and you've already so, planned out your what you're going to be wearing to the... I'm still working on it. Oh, okay. I'm still working on that. All right. So. I'm probably just going to wear the same shirts I always wear. It's just the way it goes. It's like Disneyland. You got to wear the, you know, Minnie Mouse ears and everything. You got to wear the Android shirt. They should make yeah. Android, Android like Mickey ears, but with the Android antennas. Have they oh. made those? They have the hats. The beanies? Yeah. Yes, the hats. The, the antennas, just like, just the ears would be great, like the yeah. little antennas. That would be. That would be I don't want to wear awesome, a beanie actually. all day. It's not very professional. I guess now there are antennas, but whatever. <laughs> and a little warm. <laughs> the beanie can get a little warm, let's uh -huh. face it. Um, cool. So, Florence, you can be found. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you say it. At PCWorld.com PC World. and GreenBot.com. Right, and I am writing about all the things that are Android. And also on uh, Twitter at Oh That Flow. 
That's O H that and then F L O. Yes. Awesome, Florence. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much, and please Thank come. You back. guys for having me. Awesome. Yeah, it's always always a blast. F L O on. Yes. Uh, what about you, Ron? Uh, you can go find me at about.me slash ronxo where you can find links to all my stuff, uh, whether it be Google Plus or Twitter or Instagram or wherever else you might want to try to find me online. And if you want to be somewhat entertained, you can go to my ThinkUp, thanks to Gina Trapani and Anil Dash. You can go to ronxo.thinkup.com. And it's got uh, the greatest hits of my tweets. Um, sometimes I'm funny. Sometimes I'm not. Who knew? More often, I'm not. Hmm. So. Uh, okay. People will do that. Brian, what about you? Are you living in the shadows right now? Oh, he's I'm out of the shadows oh. today. Whoa, You've emerged. That's what you look like. <gasps> yeah. Oh, no. Wait. Quick All right, I fixed it. <laughs> uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at cranky underscore hippo, but I also do know how with Padre on Thursdays and the uh, ever more complicated and stressful screensavers on Saturday, but definitely a lot of fun. Check it out. We had Kevin Rose last weekend and... Uh, didn't admit it to him, but I was kind of a fanboy, so a little, a little bit of an awkward uh, camera I'm, sesh, you know, after the show. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I hope you know I was kidding with, with, with affection when I trolled you on Facebook. Oh, and said nerd? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he, yeah, yeah. He, 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 Brian posted his picture with, uh, he got a picture with Kevin, and he's <laughs> like, he's like pretty excited to, whatever you said, pretty excited to the screen yeah. with high, Kevin Rose. And, high school me would be flipping out. Yeah, that's what he said, I so said, I, just, yeah. I just wrote nerd. Yeah? No, I took that as a term of endearment. Yeah. Absolutely, I, absolutely. I resemble that remark. Sure. So. Yes, you do resemble that <laughs> remark. No, but hey, as much of a nightmare as that show might be to make, you guys are doing a great job. I'm watching yeah, at home, cool. and it's, it's awesome. So Thanks, Ron. Love to see the screensavers back. So. No, it's great. Nerds. It's a lot of fun. Bunch of My fiance is out. also excited for what it's worth. Nice. Awesome. Hey, I'm to me about it last week. <laughs> right on. Uh, and yeah, I can only imagine you got a lot uh, to do while you're technical director of I mean, that show. You guys see shows. the mistakes I do on this show, and this show is pretty easy. In we celebrate those so. mistakes. Yes. Yeah. We, we embrace those yes. mistakes. We've owned them. We've, we've integrated them into the show. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like doing this show. You guys are so welcoming. <sighs> Nerds. <laughs> uh, let's wrap this Speaking up. of nerds, yes, how about you, Jason? This guy right here. About.me slash Jason Howell. Uh, you can find me there. My music, yellowgoldmusic.com. I do another Android show called Android App Arena. May sound familiar, doesn't it? Uh, that's by design. Go to twit.tv slash arena. You can find all the episodes there. This week, I'm actually doing a focus on podcast apps. So, you know kind of close to home. Uh, but that is it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, awesome having you guys along in the chat room. You guys are fantastic. Voicemails, 347-SHOW-AAA. You can send us an email at AAA at twit.tv or a link to a video. Uh, we are on Twitter. We're at Android Show. We're on Reddit. That's AA, uh, twitaaa.reddit.com. We're on Google+. Plus. Obviously, we have a community that will have the poll here in about two minutes. Don't worry. Uh, show notes of past episodes can always be found at twit.tv slash AAA. You can also find your shows on YouTube and iTunes. And we're live every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific, live.twit.tv. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android.